All right, welcome everyone to our live webinar today. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, hopefully everyone is healthy and safe. I know it's been some challenging times here at the last uh, couple of weeks. So we're very glad to have you join us for our webinar on waste audits. And um, I'm thrilled to be joined today by two members of our team, uh, Manny Sahota, uh, product manager here at RecycleSmart and Taylor Truckee, assisting building analyst, uh, both very experienced in waste audits and they will be sharing some of their wisdom and experience um, regarding waste audits and the value that they can bring to your organization. Just want to start with a quick overview of RecycleSmart for uh, anyone who is not familiar with RecycleSmart. Um, we've been around for over a decade and we're Canada's largest waste and recycling management provider. So one thing we'd like to get uh, out of the way is that we do not have trucks or bins. We are a technology enabled service provider managing uh, mid to large size businesses across Canada, primarily in the property management, retail, hospitality, and manufacturing distribution uh, companies. Um, the uh, activity we have is from all provinces coast to coast, and we have uh, over 5,000 sites under management and over 3,000 IoT devices, uh, sensors, monitors, and smart buttons deployed uh, across the country. So we have quite a, a bit of technology deployed and we use that to, uh, to make things more efficient and uh, also to help resolve service issues as they occur. And one important thing is we're privately held, so we're not affiliated with a waste hauler. Um, we are an independent, unbiased third party. And just a small sampling of uh, some of the companies that we work with um, across different sectors. Um, we do do quite a bit in the commercial property management sector, but also in retail and hospitality, manufacturing, and hotels and restaurants as well. So quite a diverse portfolio uh, across different industry sectors. So I'd like to introduce um, Manny Sahota, who will be speaking next. And uh, Manny has worked in the sustainability sector for uh, over 13 years in uh, a variety of different um, roles. Um, he's been involved in hundreds of waste audits across Canada in different areas, including institutional, manufacturing, commercial, and hospitality. And the audits that he's done have been varied in scope and size. And the results from these audits have been used to obtain lead and BOMA best accreditation, as well as for compliance in Ontario for the Ontario regulations. As a result of audit findings, Manny has recommended and implemented sustainability initiatives to organizations to increase diversion and capture rates and help them reach their sustainability goals. So I'm just going to uh, bring in Manny here and unmute him. One second. Sorry, just trying to unmute myself and get Manny on here. One sec. Hi, Colin. Can you hear me now? Yeah, Manny, you should be good now and you should have control. Sorry about that. No problem. The joys of... Uh, Learning to work from uh, from home, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, you should have uh, control now and should be able to advance slides. Okay. So um, thank you everyone for uh, joining us today again. Um, I know that uh, making time for webinars can sometimes be tough, but uh, we really appreciate you guys jumping on with us uh, this morning and this afternoon uh, to learn a bit more about uh, waste audits with RecycleSmart. Um, so just Diving really quickly into, into waste audits, um, we at RecycleSmart believe that there's a lot of opportunities to find ways to uh, improve efficiencies and increase sustainability by, by a, a number of different ways. Um, like, as Colin mentioned, we're, we use IoT. Um, we have a wealth of knowledge with our, our team overall uh, in, the, in, the, in the sector, so we, we understand um, how to make waste and recycling programs better across, across organizations. One of the ways that we believe that uh, can help uh, is, is do waste audits. So waste audits 
are a great way to get a detailed snapshot of what's really happening on site um, at a location to really get a firm understanding of where there are opportunities and where we can find ways to improve efficiencies and sustainability for, for your programs. So, sorry, just jumped ahead there. So what a waste audit is, is a systematic way to identify materials and items that are being disposed of at a specific location in the waste and recycling streams. Um, what we're really trying to understand by conducting a waste audit is where is everything ending up on site? Um, because that directly impacts where it ends up when it leaves your site. Um, so if we're putting in material into the waste uh, and that's uh, recyclable or organics, um, we're missing out on opportunities there to make sure that we're diverting material from the landfill. And if materials that are not uh, recyclable or organic are ending up in those specific streams, uh, we're potentially contaminating um, those streams and causing problems downstream to, to help to recycle or um, turn materials back into something usable. Um, we want to make sure that we, we avoid contaminating stuff as well. In terms of the, the types of audits uh, we look at, it, it really depends on, on what your requirements are. So audits can be highly structured or they can be unstructured. And, and what that means is if you have a, a regulatory uh, requirement or a certification requirement, you'll, you'll need to have a highly structured audit to, to fulfill your uh, requirements. If it's something a little bit more um, unstructured, we can approach it in different ways to help um, to help you get what you need out of, out of the data from that audit. So um, some of the things that we look at when we look at the scope of our audit are, is the size, the volume, and the measurement. So in terms of the size, it could be how large uh, the, the specific location is. So that could mean if it's a large office tower, do we wanna look at all of the material at once in a consolidated load? Or are we looking at it via, uh, a floor by floor measurement or by tenant. Um, it could be uh, in a manufacturing uh, setting as well, where we're looking at one production line versus another. Uh, we just wanna make sure that we get the full picture of what we're really trying to, under, trying to get from the audit and what we're measuring specifically. So the, the other part is, is looking at the volume. Uh, how much material do we, do we estimate being produced over a specific time period? So, um, is it, is it a measurement of one day? Is it a measurement of 12 hours? Is it a measurement of operational hours? There, there's a few different ways that we can look at the material to make sure that we get a, a full picture of what's really happening on site. Um, and, and in theory, when you have a, a, an audit, what you wanna be able to do is make sure that you can conduct it many times uh, over again and again to make sure that you're, you're getting a, uh, an accurate way to benchmark your progress. So some of the reasons why you'd want to conduct a waste audit, um, we believe that determining the effectiveness of current waste and recycling programs is very important. Um, really does, what we're, at, what we're looking for is figuring out does your current program manage waste and recycling and meet your needs um, the way it did at one point. Um, as we know, everything changes very quickly. Um, case in point, last month in Canada and around the world, um, do we have programs that meet and keep up to your requirements? Are you changing your production or, or is your tenant mix changing? So you would have to adjust your waste and recycling streams to match it more effectively. So we wanna make sure that we measure how effective the current setup of your waste and recycling program is. We also wanna make sure that we're finding opportunities to uh, find ways to save some money um, on the programs. Are we missing out on, our, on any opportunities where we're not optimizing our programs? Um, do, we, do we have extra bins that we don't use or are there ways to consolidate some of the bins to, to something that's more effective um, from a cost perspective for your site? We really want to understand how 
precise your sustainability data is, are we getting are we getting an accurate or precise enough number from for your waste and recycling metrics? This one can be challenging, um, but we need to understand where we sit and, and conducting an audit is, is a really good way to get a really um, specific number and idea for your specific sites um, that you can then apply to your measurements. Um, are you looking for a certification. I know a lot of uh, office buildings across Canada use the Bowman Best program and LEED to uh, to get their to obtain certification and, and you know um, achieve standards of uh, of the gold, silver, bronze programs that they both offer. We want to make sure that uh, uh, we can help you do that as well. Should you need to, um, those audits do um, do have specific requirements, and, and those are the more structured ones I was speaking of uh, a little bit earlier. Um, finally, we want to make sure that you're measuring and measuring your success. So really tracking the progress and success of your of your program. So the waste audit is a great way to set up a baseline and create the benchmark uh, year over year. So you can set targets and really effectively measure um, which way your programs are trending. Um, we want to make sure that um, the targets you set are effective um, and, and, and reasonable for your site. Um, uh, the expectation to go from um, you know a 10 percent diversion rate and a capture rate to 90 percent in, in a year is probably not really um, that great of a goal uh, you'd have probably have to chunk that out uh, a little bit smaller and, and really use uh, a waste audit to to track that number year over year finally um, keeping up with uh, the regulatory compliance requirements um, specifically uh, for the ontario uh, regulations to make sure that um, you're getting your waste uh, waste audit plans and your waste reduction plans in place um, as required from the ministry, dependent upon your uh, uh, on your location size and a few other uh, factors. So, really, um, for me here here's Taylor um, doing a deep dive in into a waste uh, into a waste audit. We really want to understand um, where materials are being generated and coming from on site. Um, Surprisingly, it's uh, being through uh, many audits. You can you can clearly um, pick out things um, from from the streams and and see um, a lot of times which which office it's coming from or which um, which area of a, of a business is coming from. Um, from there, we can really help um, develop targeted strategies to help reduce the the materials that are going into the waste or help materials that should be going into the recycling streams uh, by adjusting the behavior of the stakeholders on site, using signage, um, uh, IOT devices sometimes might help. Um, and, and, and finally, um, one of the newer things that uh, I, I think is becoming more prevalent is, is really looking into the purchasing behavior. So making sure your inputs are things that are sustainable and then matching your waste streams and recycling streams to make sure that you can accommodate the, the new materials you're bringing in that are sustainable. So. Um, really using a waste audit to identify these items um, can help to, to set up your program for success. Um, so why Recycle Smart? Well, as an organization, we have a lot of experience uh, conducting waste audits. We, we have a, a large team that's um, been in the industry for many years and they've had multiple roles. So, we, we can draw on that wealth of experience to get to gain us insights into, into the different types of uh, businesses that we work with um, and, and the businesses that you may have. We understand that while not every business is the same, we can take our learnings across the board and help to facilitate uh, waste audits that, that makes sense. So one of, one of the key things that we try to do for every waste audit is we try to facilitate audits that, uh, that are not disruptive um, to your uh, working day uh, on site. We want to make sure that uh, wherever possible, you try to do them after hours. Make sure that um, you know uh, we don't change the behavior of uh, of the stakeholders on that day. Um, knowing that a waste audit is happening, people might be a bit more diligent than they normally are uh, in trying to find the right place uh, for the specific material they're trying to dispose of. So we want to make sure that uh, we don't change behavior typically. Of, uh, of the stakeholders. So we facilitate waste audits um, after hours. 
uh, where possible. And, and the other uh, great thing for that is, is it's less uh, disruption to your normal day. Uh, with the reporting, we want to make sure that uh, we provide the comp comprehensive report that provides you the details um, so you can make an informed decision um, on what next steps that you're, would be best for your organization. So um, this leads into, into our recommendations where we, we tailor this recommendations for your specific challenges on site. And, and, and finally, making sure that we can help to implement some of these uh, sustainable solutions for you. So um, some of the ways that we do this is, is using um, um, effective signage, uh, potentially new bins, the placement of the bins on site for, for the users. Um, and, and sometimes even using IoT might be effective uh, depending, on the, depending on the requirement and the recommendation. And, and finally, one of the things that uh, we do is uh, for, for our existing customers, we, we track the ongoing diversion rate based on the services on site. And alongside a waste audit, we can then really start to get a more precise number um, for you. Um, month over month. So you get a better understanding of exactly what's going on on your site specifically. So I, I'd like to uh, now pass it over to Taylor, who's going to uh, take a deeper dive into, into looking at the different types of waste audits that, uh, that RecycleSmart uh, provides and, and uh, offers. Manny, um, that's a great overview in terms of why you might want to do a waste audit. So uh, I'm just going to get Taylor set up here and uh, she will take control here. So uh, just as Taylor is getting control of the uh, presentation, I just want to give a quick intro of who Taylor is. Um, so Taylor Truckee is a three R certified waste auditor with experience in conducting hundreds of waste audits in the GTA and across Canada. Uh, originally, Focusing on municipal and residential curbside audits, she now coordinates and executes on-site waste audits for clients in the ICNI sector. As someone who has always been mindful of their own waste, Taylor's passion and valuable insights continuously help others to view waste management as an opportunity to conduct day-to-day -day operations more sustainably. And uh, I believe ICI is industrial and commercial, or maybe Taylor can fill us in on ICNI, one of those crazy acronyms. So uh, Taylor, the uh, floor is yours. Awesome. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Yeah, so ICNI, industrial, commercial, and institutional. You kind of get caught up in the acronyms when you're living in the waste world. But anyways, thanks, Colin, for the intro. And thank you, everyone, for joining us for this webinar today. Um, I'm going to go through some of the different types of waste audits offered by RecycleSmart. Um, the, the types of audits I'm going to touch on are the most common audits that we conduct, but like Manny said, we are able to modify the scope of any project based on what, um, what you're looking for or if there's certain aspects of your business that you're hoping to um, improve on in terms of waste. So first we're gonna talk about the Ontario regulatory waste audits. So these are compliance based audits specifically for those in the industrial, commercial and institutional uh, sectors. So the different building types in these sectors such as like a retail establishment or an office building, uh, hotels, motels, they all use different thresholds to determine uh, whether or not a yearly waste audit needs to be conducted. So for example, a retail establishment or an office building over 10,000 square meters or the equivalent of uh, about 107,000 square feet would be required to conduct a yearly waste audit. Uh, for those owners and operators of hotels and motels, it would be any uh, building with more than 75 units. Uh, and an educational institution would have more than 350 people enrolled full time within one calendar year. So these are just some examples of the different types of thresholds that are used to help us determine whether or not your building needs to conduct one of these audits um, on a yearly basis. So the regulation also outlines the parameters for what a waste audit should uh, look at and 
what the waste reduction work plans should focus on as well. So the waste audits have to look at the amount, nature and composition of the waste generated at your site, as well as how it's produced and managed by the policies and programs in place. And then once a waste audit is conducted, we will put together a waste reduction work plan that outlines uh, plans to reduce and reuse uh, and recycle the different waste types at your site. And it will also outline who is implementing each part of the plan and what the expected results are. So these waste audits and work plans help to inform uh, each of our sites on how to be compliant with Regulation 103 as well. So this regulation focuses on the source separation programs that are required to be in place um, at the different types of properties. So um, the thresholds for these properties are similar, or I, I believe they're the same as the Regulation 102. So they basically outline what diversion programs need to be implemented for the different uh, building types. So for example, an office building would need to have six um, main diversion programs in place to be compliant with Regulation 103. Uh, these six diversion programs would be for aluminum food and beverage cans, cardboard, fine paper, glass bottles and jars, newsprint, and steel food or beverage containers. So they are different for each type of building, but um, those six are pretty consistent across the board. And then there's slight variations for each of the other uh, types of buildings. So having an audit conducted really helps us to identify um, where improvements need to be made and also how we can get these programs properly set up at the sites that need to be compliant with the regulation. So aside from the regulatory waste audits, we do conduct a number of LEED and BOMA best waste audits. So when we're conducting an audit for a client that will be submitting for one of these certifications, we do need to determine which program they're applying for because they do differ slightly in the requirements. Uh, as Manny said before, these waste audits are also pretty structured. Um, they do have differing requirements. For example, a lead waste audit looks at the weight and composition of uh, materials generated at a site. So we look at 100% of the material generated over a 24 hour period. So if a site has cardboard waste recycling and organics programs, each of them would need to be completely assessed to indicate how much is actually being generated and how much is being diverted from each stream. Uh, the slight difference with BOMA Best Waste Audits is that we look at the waste and recycling generated at a site, but there isn't a set time frame for the sampling period. So we do have to determine what an operational cycle looks like for the properties that we conduct BOMA Best Audits at. So for example, uh, an office building is typically about a 24 hour sampling period because their day-to-day -day operations are fairly consistent. Whereas for, let's say like a manufacturing facility, we may see um, varying practices over a week's time. So we might have to spread out the audit period for you know, five or seven days to get an accurate sampling of what a typical day of operations looks like. So I, I didn't have a slide for it, but also what Manny mentioned before about unstructured audits. Um, I like to call these benchmarking audits. They are really great for people who want to get insight into something specific on their site. Um, for example, I've conducted an audit recently that provided tenant by tenant breakdowns of waste generated by each tenant in a building so that the um, the managers of the building could get a better idea of who is generating what type of waste and how um, targeted communications could help them to deal with maybe those problem items that were not getting captured in the correct stream. 
So once we've uh, completed a waste audit, we compile all of our data and we analyze it to determine some of these performance um, factors for each site. So diversion rate focuses on the amount of waste diverted from a site, not including any of the contamination that was found in the streams. And we compare that to the total amount of waste generated on a site. So diversion rate is a great place to start with benchmarking, uh, but it is a little bit limiting to use on its own because it doesn't necessarily capture reuse and reduction uh, practices that are happening at the site. So good place to start, but I like to focus more on capture rate. Uh, this is the amount of material that's currently diverted versus the total amount of material that could have been diverted. So capture rate basically measures how well the tenants or the staff or even visitors are utilizing your programs and how much of each of the divertible materials is being captured in the correct stream. So for example, like your capture rate or your capture rate would be lower if you consistently found that cardboard was being placed in your garbage stream rather than being placed in a recycling or cardboard bin. And this is just because if it was captured in the correct bins, then we would be properly diverting that material from landfill. Uh, finally, we have annualization. So this is a method of calculation that determines roughly how much of each material will be generated at the site over the course of one year. These values can be used to provide an auditor with some insight into how we can implement different diversion programs and uh, how often they may be serviced for collection. It also allows for a quick comparison of the overall waste and recycling generation each year. So we do include those three performance uh, indicators inside of the reports that we generate for uh, each of our waste audits. So I thought I would just grab a couple samples to share of some of the pages that are included in um, our waste audit reports. So the image on the left shows the diversion rate and capture rates from a site and you'll notice in the capture rate section where the bar graph is uh, let's look at organics. So it's saying that it's about 25%. So that's telling me that of the 100% of organics that is generated at the site, only 25% of that material is ending up in the organic stream. So there's definitely room for improvement, uh, whether it be to engage with the tenants or create training manuals or signage, whatever needs to be done to kind of get that number up. And then for clients that we already work with uh, to manage their, their other waste services, we do have um, waste diversion data from each month. So we like to compare our waste auditing results to that data to see where does it fall in terms of the monthly averages and and what does that mean? It could be that there's more stream contamination or less stream contamination that we're seeing in the audit days. So there are a number of factors that contribute to um, how we would compare these uh, numbers. And then we also look at uh, material analysis and breakdown of the different uh, streams. So, we focus on waste and recycling as well as site totals. This one uh, on the left here is uh, looking at the divertibles in the waste stream. So we're seeing that there was 40% plastic seen in the waste stream. And so those are materials that could have been diverted in the recycling um, programs on site. So that just gives us an idea of where we can target um, recommendations and improvements at the site. And then we also include some photos. Uh, I like to take photos of things that are notable or uh, generated in excess. For example, there's a lot of styrofoam you can see in the bottom left photo there. And that just tells me that if there was a styrofoam program 
available near this site, then we could implement something to kind of, you know, mitigate those materials that are being generated in excess. And then these are just samples of the reporting documents for the Ministry of Environment. So if you're conducting a regulatory compliance audit, we would include these forms at the end of your report. Uh, we would fill them out and they're basically the waste reduction work plans that the site contact would use to implement any changes, to um, increase reduction, uh, reuse and recycling at the site so that we could get the diversion rates and capture rates um, higher and get the programs working where they need to be. So this is a good benchmarking uh, tool as well because you can go back year over year. Um, also that because the compliance audits are more structured, it gives us an opportunity to see how a site is performing year over year. So I think that's it for me. Um, I guess, oh well, I hope that you enjoyed this portion of the webinar. Um, if you are considering scheduling a waste audit or you know that you have, um, you fall within the threshold for one of the Ontario compliance audits or you're looking for a building certification, definitely uh, reach out to us. We're always excited to get our hands dirty and uh, complete these audits for you based on the, the scope of what you're looking for. So happy to work with anyone interested in a waste audit. Colin, over to you. Perfect, thanks Taylor. Um, uh, Manny, I'm just gonna unmute you as well for uh, Q&A here, so one sec. And then uh, we will open up the floor to any questions. And um, for questions, there is a Q&A section. Uh, you can type in a question and we will uh, have the panelists answer. Um, I do have a couple questions that have popped through here as we've been uh, running through the uh, webinar. So the first question coming in is, how do you quote for a waste audit? Um, so Manny or between Manny and Taylor, whoever you, who wants to take that one. So how do we find out how much a waste audit is going to cost? Um, so for us, what we, what we really do is do we, um, we take, we take the information that you can provide us and we try to assess the estimated volumes along with the total size and scope of the audit. So, um, if you're looking for a lead audit, which requires a 24 hour sample, there's a bit more, um, there's a bit more that goes into it. And so we have to account for that. Um, and, and part of that is, is looking at the timelines as well. So uh, we need to understand how quickly we need to turn stuff around so we can allocate enough resources to get it done in, in the appropriate time. We try, to, um, <clears throat> we try to take in all the factors um, when we are trying to price out a, uh, a waste audit for you. They, um, the, the key for us is making sure that, that the, the end result is there that you need to, to move forward with. So um, for us, the making sure that report that we provide you at the end of the audit really gets you what you need. So um, throughout the progress, we're, we're in touch often to, to make sure that we're, we're capturing all our requirements um, correctly and, and then we'll, we'll work operationally with you to make sure that we can get it done. Great, thanks Manny. A uh, question coming in from Adam Tan. Um, are these waste audits done on the property site or hauled away to another location? So I know this is a question that's often, especially on sites where they don't have a lot of space um, to actually sort of waste. Yeah, so we do conduct our waste audits at um, the site. For the Ontario compliance audits, it is required that they are conducted at the site. Um, not all audits are required to have them conducted there, but it is the best way to get the most representative sample. Um, that way we're not losing anything in transition to a new location. Um, I have worked in different sizes of, of properties before. We do typically try to um, set it up in like a loading dock area or the waste area. 
I do think that having an indoor space to be able to conduct an audit is preferable, but I have also conducted them in a, a parking spot before. So we can definitely make it work and try to keep them uh, as minimally disruptive to the, the location that we're working at. Okay, great. Thanks, Taylor. Uh, another question coming in here says, um, this is for Ontario specifically, how much time do I have to conduct an Ontario compliance waste audit if I haven't already? So this would be if I fit into one of those categories, but I, I've never done one. Yeah, so for the Ontario compliance audits, the regulation came into effect in uh, the early 1990s. So I guess the short answer is that if you haven't had one yet and you haven't been approached by the, the ministry at all, then I would conduct one as soon as you can get one scheduled. Um, and then from each year after that, plan to update and renew those waste audits, have a new one scheduled for around the same time frame, so that you're keeping within the, um, the compliance sort of time frame. Uh, if you have been visited by a ministry officer, then you've got, I believe, six months from the time that uh, their waste audit was requested from you to complete your first audit. Okay, great. Um, thanks very much, guys, for your expertise on waste audits. I know right now, obviously, pretty challenging time for a lot of businesses uh, in terms of waste audits, uh, with a lot of buildings being closed and, and concerns around COVID-19. Um, Definitely though, one thing to keep in, in mind is that I think once uh, things go back to normal, whenever that is, we're going to have quite a rush on waste audits. So if you are planning to do one in 2020 or need to do one for regulatory or certification purposes, it wouldn't hurt to pre-book um, and get you know in the schedule because I think we're going to see a very, very busy fall with a lot of people trying to get them done before the end of the year. Um, I wanna thank everyone for attending today. And uh, if you have any, um, Further questions on waste audits, um, feel free to reach out to our team. You can uh, reach out to either Manny or uh, Taylor. Um, you can also just go to our website and live chat or go through the main contact form and ask any questions about waste audits um, through there. So I hope everyone has a great rest of your Thursday and thanks very much for joining us on the waste audit webinar.